Mini Matters, a miniature and painting podcast. Hi guys, welcome to our series in which we look at comic book art and how it's influenced the miniature painting world. As you can see, we are joined by a different guest this week, Arnel. Hello Arnel, welcome to the show. Hello, very happy to be here. Thanks. And of course, it wouldn't be a show unless we had ja unless we had Jamie with us. How are you, Jamie? Okay? Not bad, not bad. No, thanks for inviting me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Arnel. I thought just to break the ice, we'd probably, <laughs> we'd probably talk about um, how you first became, uh, or your first experience of comic books. Uh, comic books, uh, probably when I was younger, there, when I was very young, in fact, uh, there was this um, comic uh, comedy very popular in in Spain. It was Mortadelo y Filemón. It was uh, something that my father my father uh, showed me, and I read tons of them. And it was very it was a smart, very smart kind of uh, comic. Uh, I mean, it was a, a satiric. Yeah, it didn't have superpowers then. No, no. Well, kind of. <laughs> one <laughs> one guy was was able to transform into whatever he he thought. Mm -hmm. Maybe it, it was more of a um, costume, not as transforming itself. Mm -hmm. But it, it had it, the laws of physics didn't apply very much. <laughs> I mean, that's like every comic, I guess. Yeah, in a yeah, way. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and I read. Mm, a lot of them. It was quite a part of my childhood. Do you know what? That's of all the answers I think I've ever heard in my entire life. That's mm. the most unexpected one because I would always expect Marvel, DC, yes, like, I don't know, even like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something. But this to hear a satirical kid reading comic is amazing. Well, it, it, it's this kind of now. It's it's really. Uh, it used to be maybe less important, but mm -hmm. now you can find it in in other uh, in other Language. comics or, or even in in child um, TV shows uh, that you can find this part of of the kid and then the part of the adult. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and now it's more it's more normal, but in that time, uh, uh, not many comics or, or kids stuff had these two sides mm -hmm. and and this author uh, Ibáñez who died I think a couple of years ago uh, did all did a lot of this in, in his comics it's pretty and, good it's yeah good. my father always read this, uh, read this even Marvel and DC but this was maybe a bit more interesting for a child more, more silly sometimes Okay. Was there anything about that comic that drew you in terms of art, or did your passion for art in comic books come later on, maybe with more mainstream titles? Uh, I always loved uh, fantasy, superheroes, and uh, all this kind of stuff. Um, I know I started drawing with my father also. Uh, he uh, used to, to pick my hand and, and draw with me. Oh, I see. So okay. I, I learned how to draw thanks to him. All right. He was my cat. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> friendly cat, to be fair. Like I've locked mine in my room, but they 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 don't bother me. Well, they do sometimes, but yeah, they don't love me. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> Sorry, cat talk. Uh, your dad taught you to draw. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it was kind of natural because I my my father taught me to to draw this way, and I. Uh, developed my interest for comics and, and this exploded into Marvel and now Marvel is my main source of comic books. I've got, okay. got to say interesting for me because obviously like the, the model we're covering in this specific episode is is your comic mm -hmm. Iron Man right um, but I, I like your, I don't know your style to me. Maybe I haven't seen enough of your work, but it never screams like comic book like this does. Of like you know this model. It, it, yeah. Your it always it, well it feels just 
you do have a range, but like the, the, the wizard you did, I don't know if that was specifically Gandalf, but like that's like super... It's not even realistic, is it? Because it is sort of cartoony, but also at the same time completely not. Yeah, I, I don't think... Uh, the the word realistic is something that I don't think it can be applied. Uh, yeah, tomorrow, yeah. 90 or ninety nine percent of the time, uh, you can say that you're painting realistic. Mm. You you are painting in a I don't know more yeah, natural yeah. or yeah. or believable. But uh, maybe Kirill Kirill is trying to do something yeah. more hyper realistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I I'm not I, at all. It's not my my interest. I don't think I try to be uh, in a comic style. In this case, of course, because mm -hmm. it's a TV and and uh, the work of Big Child was a, a lot mm, my inspiration. In fact, they did mm, an amazing job, and I'm almost copying what they did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, for example, in the Marvel series of Night Models, yeah, I tried to do something a bit more colorful, comic, mm. but still, I, I don't recognize my style um, anyway, so I don't <laughs> I don't know exactly what yeah. um, is what I do different from from other people. Yeah, I, th I think I do find it fascinating because I'd say a lot of, because you're a lot of the younger generation, right, of, of mm -hmm. these painters, like, obviously the older generation influence you, but then everybody has their own take on how and where they want to take it. So, yeah. I, yeah, I, I guess if if someone who had a really good eye for art, they might be able to see this was a slight influence here and there. But I, I'd completely agree that your style's not like anyone else's. But that's probably why you're so popular and so good. Like, but it's the same with like Atami and you know Alfonso. Like everyone's got their own style. Hmm. I don't think you guys, all the top level painters, don't really have a shared style. I don't think. Hmm. I think I think your palette choices. Uh, there's there's obviously that Spanish style, isn't there? That that highly saturated mm -hmm. um, um, palette choices you you pick. So that's that's similar. Going back to what Jamie touched upon there, obviously in the first episode we talked about the night models movement um, and how how it affected the miniature painting world, mm -hmm. what they were doing there with with color choices and whatnot. Do you, do you were you painting or were you conscious of the painting world when that happened and did it have any type of influence on you, particularly particularly being Spanish? Uh, I started painting quite uh, not so long ago. Uh, in 2015, I consider myself uh, starting um, in the <laughs> in, for the real. <laughs> Uh, I started painting Warhammer and this kind of stuff, but really, really badly. Uh, maybe at <laughs> 10 years old, more or less. But go on and off, you know, this uh, it wasn't uh, a serious thing. I, I always liked it, but never put myself into it. And in 2015, more or less, or 2014, uh, Night Models was, I think the Marvel range was at the very end. Yeah, yeah um, ten years ago was when it started, according yeah. to yeah, Banshee last ep last episode. Yeah, and and they they stopped selling the Marvel range uh, for I don't know maybe one or two years after I was uh, painting, and at the beginning I I was quite in love because it was of course one of the first things that came in my to my eyes uh, mm -hmm. the Marvel range and I I didn't catch the Star Wars range. It was already gone. Okay. Um, but the Marvel range, especially the Ghost Rider, the Colossus, and the Iron Man uh, by mm -hmm. Alfonso, uh, they absolutely um, catch me and, and probably is one of the reasons I paint nowadays. All right. Yeah. That's good. I'll tell it. Well, he'll probably watch this, actually, so I don't need to tell him. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, it's it's because that was what we were talking about in that episode was obviously he couldn't quantify the significance, but it was your question, wasn't it, Lionel? Like, yeah. did you did you feel that yeah this sort of shaped? And... I think it did. Uh, maybe not at the beginning. Mm. Mm, I mean, I, I'm quite um, take this. Uh, as, as it is, I'm quite ignorant in terms of uh, painters of history and mm -hmm. and because I 
I'm young in this world and I don't I don't, I don't study uh, history of, of the miniature painting. Uh, I know things, of course, but I think one of the reasons that I don't feel attached to these old styles and, and this uh, way of painting that used to be before is because I didn't I wasn't in that moment. Mm. I started myself when the movement of Night Models, Alfonso and that, it was already uh, mm. in place. So I took it for granted. Like mm. uh, it, it's painting, right? You you can do whatever you want. You don't have to do um, yeah. super nice blending, super smooth things. You just paint and do whatever you like. And, and I think, of course, without Night Models, maybe, I mean, without that Alfonso and, and that movement, I wouldn't catch so quickly or, or maybe so independently my point of view. I, uh, now I just do what I want. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I never had this necessity of do it, of do, of, yeah. I don't know, super long, hours yeah. uh super nice blending super i didn't yeah it was, also, that. it was like this whole weird blending phase and then it went to like sort of realistic and desaturated and i basically mm. you've come in at a good time to just be like here's everything that's in front of me i'll just interpret it how i want and then just mm. have a fucking good time yeah basically it's this this is the dream I mean, it, you know, if oh, there's probably no no fair analogy. I was going to say a bit like, you know, your parents went to war so that you could come and paint really well. But the analogy doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I, they I fought for our freedom. Yeah, good. Thank you, Lionel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in terms of the Iron Man piece, actually, that James we, pulled up. We switched it. Can yeah. you, can you uh, talk us through how you approached it? Did you look at any source material, any comic book art before you started to 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 pick the palette choices obviously you've gone for a cell shade kind of approach which i think mm -hmm. fits in line with what the rest of big child studio was doing mm -hmm. with the rest of the pieces but can you talk us through uh your general approach and how you began planning if you did plan before you started painting this model yeah uh before that i always think that having a plan is a must uh if you you cannot paint uh as as you go because um then things will will not be cohesive you don't you are not painting a, a piece uh you're not painting something um or you are not doing something specific you are just painting or coloring it's, okay you know. so uh, painting is more uh, an idea you have an idea and you paint it and and that's absolutely always how i work uh in this case it's really easy because i picked the artwork of the box and I just translate it into the miniature. Uh, very straightforward, in fact. Okay, so you you, you didn't you, you didn't look at uh, any comic book art or anything in, in in this case, not because I I already had uh, the perfect artwork. I looked to the big child uh, job uh, quite a lot, so I I, kn I knew more or less what what I should do, and it's. This, this kind of style is quite in, e easy because just... I've, un I've unpaused it. Right, we'll just wing it. Sorry, everyone. Uh, I plugged in these little Bluetooth headphones because what you will have realized is we had feedback because uh, the audio was coming out of the speakers. So excuse me for that. And, and now you were saying... <laughs> Uh, I think I was saying that I I picked the art box uh, for the reference. I just translated the the image. Well, in fact, uh, the the characters have these uh, cards for playing, and in these cards yeah. they have an artwork, and okay. and the main artwork is the the pose that they have in the figure. So it's basically picking the card and and translating it to the to the figure. And I think I don't know if this was recorded, but I was saying that it it's quite uh, easy to to paint this because you have this flat surface and then you can add a couple of shadows and lights in a places that mostly the the card tells you 
and then it's it's pretty straightforward because you don't have to invent or in this particular case that you have the the artwork of course it's it's one of those pieces and 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 all the artists who have done pieces for this range um on on their on their um on their page as well when you look at it for too long you forget it's a 3d model <laughs> it, it's it's been <laughs> Yeah, it's been it's interpreted so that well. I keep when I when I keep staring at it on the gallery now, I forget that it's not a uh, a two D drawing or a comic book drawing. Um, so I think that as well is a testament to to the skill that you put uh, into the piece. I'm very glad you think so. <laughs> big up, big up. I, I do have a very confusing question for myself, right? Because it looks like you've used pens to paint. Um, because it's so yeah, you can <laughs> look confused. It's fine, but look right. <laughs> Wait, let me zoom I in. think I think I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You you can see the paint. It's here. This this stroke here baffs me. Like because I don't know why it baffs me so much, but it does. It it was it just like it's it's obviously one layer, two layers, three. I can see the different uh -huh. or maybe well, not layers but colours. Yeah. I can see the transitions, right? But it still literally looks like the way it's done, it looks like a brush stroke. Sorry, like an ink pen stroke. Mm-hmm. But it, it, uh, it obviously was deliberate and it wasn't just that it was luck, I'm assuming. Yeah, it, it's something that it, it was in my, my mind a lot because uh, in these cases, you have to hide the paint. Like you cannot uh, leave um, brush strokes or things unattended, like mm -hmm. in another other, other figure that you can uh, not define everything or maybe uh, wing it. Uh, but here you have to absolutely calculate uh, every line where the shadow and the, and the mid-tone light or whatever uh, mm. fades and in in my case I think in Big Child they, they blended a, a bit more, they did uh, some more transitions I, I just, I almost did manga style uh, mm. with, yeah. with very hard cuts so I, I needed to have, have these cuts really really smooth smooth like not blended but uh very linear yeah not like not like uh bubbled or layered or like the way you can see that it's yeah almost like because yeah as as you say Lionel, it doesn't really feel like paint in the in, no. the in the sense that we know what paint is i i'm always i always try and not like come across too fanboy when I have a guest on because <laughs> it's just, it gets weird. But yeah, sometimes th these questions, I feel like a, a more just generally I'm impressed and I want to know more <laughs> about how it's done rather than, well, obviously it is incredibly good, but like, <clears throat> I think um, when I look, because the scale's not big, right? It's a small, it's a small model. Yeah, it's yeah, like a 32 cool. more or less. Yeah, which is even more insulting in a way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I genuinely I I could ask a lot of questions. I, I think I think for me as well with this kind of style, it's very understated. I think Jamie will agree as well. Obviously, Alfonso is all about brush strokes, isn't he? Mm -hmm. um, he he respects blending, of course, and he he, he thinks blending uh, has a has a place. But also, mm -hmm. he's all about those bold br bold brush strokes. And obviously, learning with him and and his technique, I realise now how how skilled you have to be. To be bold enough to place a brush stroke or a, a define like mm. you've done there and for the eye to register it because i think it's far easier not easier because it's probably doing a disservice to people who can blend but it's i think a different you could technique, possibly, isn't it? I, I think you could blend something so that even if it's slightly wrong mm -hmm. you can get away with it however making a, a bold statement like you've done in this miniature and how Al alfonso does with his where he'll he'll place a brush stroke perfectly and the eye interprets it. I think that I, I do think that's an underrated skill in my view. And now, having tried to do it myself and learn it, I realise I realise how difficult it is because if you get that if you get that placement wrong, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Yes. So I think once again, once again, I think what Jamie's touched upon here as well in this model is you made some bold choices in terms of where you place those hard edges, those hard uh, defined areas, um, and in doing so. It, it gives that impact across. But I think sometimes uh -huh. when you see a finished piece like that so well, it can be understated um, how how difficult that is actually to do. Yeah, I think um, you have to commit and, yes. and yes. do it. It's and 
<laughs> when, when you commit to, to something, uh, even if it's wrong the first time, I, I change a lot of things in my in my figures, but I commit to to make them work. And it's not. I, I know that it it won't be perfect at the first try. It's it's almost impossible to do everything perfect at the same at the first try. So I just make it work, and I take as long as I need to make it work. But not um, six hundred hours. Well, out of interest, well, that would be my question. Roughly, how much time did you spend on this particular piece? Um, four hours, more or less. Four hours. Five hours, maybe. <laughs> yeah. That's a joke. He's joking. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, it, 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 let me um, explain <laughs> why uh, this this figure. It's uh, the base is just red you know, plain red. In this case, it's the Evil Suns, I think, ever since Scarlet from his workshop. Mm -hmm. And then in a base coat of white, then you have the, the whole figure in, in red. Mm -hmm. Then, obviously, the, the, the gold and the stuff, it will come in, in separate ways. But then you just have to add the shadow that is quite easy because it's just a line in, in most places. And, and then a few reflexes. Do you understand what I mean? I I, I feel like I'm lagging, like, like, but no, 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 no a, a, absolutely. I know what you mean, but it's it's a we little bit like that. It's yeah, yeah. Now. It's like you see a master horse rider, and then you know it's your first lesson. He's riding on. He's doing backflips on the horse, firing arrows and stuff, <laughs> and then he goes, he goes, don't screw face, Lionel. He goes, he goes <laughs> right now. You do it, and you, you can't even get on. And then he goes. Hey man, what are you talking about? Just get on the horse and do the backflip. That's yeah. like you've yeah. like you've explained logic perfectly. And um, if don't, I had the skill, don't get, don't get don't get me wrong. I wasn't expecting it to be hours and hours, but I didn't expect it to be as long. Yeah, I expected like fifteen at least. Yeah, 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 yeah. But wow. I, I, like you say though, Lionel, when you have a talent to be able to see where colors should sit like intrinsically or where you've built it up over time to understand it, then placing those brush strokes, you know, you and I, when we do the blends or we try and do that, we'd spend hours searching for the right places for it to go. Whereas mm -hmm. like, like you say, when we've watched Alfonso paint, it's like bish bash bosh. And then it's like, it's basically that's four hours. Cause that is bish bash bosh for someone I suppose, who. Yeah, I suppose so. It's, it's basically a bit more further on from what you would call a sketch. Um, I suppose. In a, in a nice well, way. Well, yeah, I, I, mm, my sketches are quite roughly, um, well, quite rough. It, it, in fact, uh, my sketches are not like Alfonso's. Are not maybe as beautiful or as as uh, are way more messy. Okay. Um, in in some cases they are beautiful, but. I think they fit more purpose <laughs> and not so not are not so aesthetic. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and in this yeah. case, it's, it's, well, it's way more thought and way more um, straightforward. You know, this I have to do this, and that's it. I'd love to see um, one of your sketches then, because when I try and sketch and I think of Alfonso, I just I, I, I it's like, what the hell am I doing here? I don't belong here trying to do sketches because it's <laughs> never it never works out. I'd like it's. But sketches are. It seems the more I'm here, they're, they're more important. Or the 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 importance becomes more apparent the more I spend time with painters who are better than me. If that makes sense. I think I think what's quite interesting as well what you mentioned, which um, is something that I'm going to have to start to learn, is even painters at your level still plan a piece before. There's always this assumption, and I know it's we all do it where we just want to start painting, we start throwing paint on the model. Um, and it's it's unusual, or I think it's unusual to think that painters who are as versed as you and paint as much as you still sit down and plan your model before you put brush brush to paint. I think it's quite uh, it's it's imagine a, a painter, a canvas painter. Yeah, uh, they have to plan. They can start painting, throwing paint to the to the canvas because they. I don't know. Uh, well, Bob Ross did, but mm, <laughs> he wasn't uh, this kind of painter. But imagine Roberto Ferri, for example. Uh, I think he plans quite a lot, or anyone. It's the same. 
you you mm. are not we uh it's this mm, way of seeing painting figures as um, it's not insulting but coloring them like coloring the figure is not the same uh, um, of painting on top of them yeah you have mm -hmm. you have a canvas in a, in a shape and you paint your idea on top of it and yeah. the other is coloring what the sculpture gives you and having a plan makes you paint on top of the figure not so coloring the, the thing that they gave you mm. yeah it's something that i suppose we maybe lionel have to I don't know. I haven't got that far yet, conceptually thinking or worrying about those things, if that makes sense. Mm. It doesn't need a, a mind-bending uh, yeah. skill to plan yeah. something. I, I in in standard in in most contests in standard, mm. there are a lot more beautiful things because they are planned. They have a meaning. Yeah. They have something interesting than in master. In master, usually is is showing off skill and and not much more but in in standard uh, in spain it happens a lot in, in one of the only contests we have that standard has probably more interesting pieces than master right. because of because of that because they can be more creative as it were i think they they do they want to do something they they are not just sitting yeah. on the on the figure and painted yeah. i think um what what i found as well is it, it's a combination of laziness and impatience to get started so the first thing you do is you start throwing paint onto the miniature and then i find that i get into trouble later down the line <laughs> and yeah. i realize had i and it's particularly with values uh, yeah. when, when i'm trying to get values and contrast if i'd planned my paint choices at the start of the project i would have found it easy to resolve certain issues in terms of contrast and value further down the line so that's obviously something that i need to do but it's refreshing to hear obviously artists like yourself who you you know are, are, are skilled still take the time to sit down and plan um and it just shows that it's it's something that shouldn't be taken for granted mm, I guess. It's, yeah in fact I, I think it's one of the most important parts that, and i i always take if, even it's like a mindset i have to put a mindset for for every figure and i have to take my time to put this uh, setup in, in in place like maybe i i do it uh the night before i start something i i have to search know what i would i want to do it's not I, I cannot sit in front of a figure and start painting it's absolutely impossible that i um do something worth seeing uh if i don't think what i'm doing because this was going to be my question was what does planning look like because I think when, when I hear planning, this is what I assume planning is, right? Uh, well, this is what my my inner self tells me. It's, okay, right, so I have a model here, like Iron Man, uh, and he's grey, and right, so I know his colours, it's red and, and uh, yellow. Uh, and then what's the complementary of one of those colours? I'll pick that as some sort of secondary, because obviously I want it to splash out. And then I'll be like, right, so I just need different tones of red. And then that'll be my planning, right? And mm -hmm. then... Okay, maybe it's not it's not fair on this model because you had the artwork, but let's say for like the wizard, mm -hmm. that that would be as far as my planning would go. What is my palette going to be? Um, and like you said, Lionel, like the values. So I'd try and mix a whole load of crap together on my palette and be like, right, job done. And now I can paint. So, but it's interesting. Your planning is obviously different than... <laughs> In in this in this case that you are mentioning the wizard, uh, it's it's one of the easy ones to explain. Uh, when I have this figure at home, I, I think you mean the black crow one, the yeah, last one. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a like a lot. It's a classical figure. It's a classical character. It's a wizard in in the fantasy classic kind of way. And what brings this to me is this classical. Um, illustrations really uh, yellowish warm uh, like I don't know if you if you know what I mean this uh, ochre um, illustrations are most yeah it's like an overtone over or like a uh, yeah a, a feeling almost yeah it's something that you could find in old uh, 
uh, books of illustrations or all fantasy, mm -hmm. uh, very traditional. And I wanted to give this look to the figure, so I knew I had to put a lot of ochre, a lot of orange, a lot of uh, browns in the figure, and uh, put a lot of focus in the face, face and book. It, it's not like uh, an OSL, it's not his glowing or the book is glowing, but you, you can see how the all the light is attracting to the face and book, and it fades uh, like concentrical. And that's the main idea. Once I have this, all the colors, uh, I know that they are uh, changed by this ambient, but by this yellow ambient. So I just have to to adapt these colors, adapt the light, and that's that's it. That's it. So the planning is more you work out what the feeling of the model is and and how you need to get there. So like, for example, if you were painting maybe a bust of an elf who's mm -hmm. maybe recently <laughs> lost someone. <laughs> we, ha we have to talk about a bust of an elf. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that's I think that's what's I don't know. It doesn't set you guys apart, but it's obviously when you get to a higher level of painting, you have yeah. to have that because otherwise you can't achieve, um, you know, well, basically that higher level and a feeling. Because I brought, I thought I'd bring up the the guy just to give people a, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so at least because now now you see the yellow a lot more. Before mm -hmm. before you said it, I felt it, but it was more like. An old, it felt like an old book almost, which is slightly yellowed. Um, and now you say, I see it so much more clearly uh, on the whole model. Um, but yeah, it's, I can't even remember what I was saying. Who cares, isn't it? My cat. <laughs> it is <took> yeah. <laughs> they did a little bit. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I think what we'll do is we'll end this this episode here. Obviously, join us in the future. We're going to speak to Arnel about Morpheus pieces on future episodes. In order to stay tuned into all of that and not miss an episode, please remember to subscribe to the channel and like. And if you could share, we'd really appreciate it. Once again, if you do enjoy the content, guys, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Once again, Jamie and I particularly do like reading them all. Uh, we do like to know what you think and that people have watched and we do respond. Um, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>